the Smock G-Priv. How's it going everybody? This is Andy with AspenValleyVapes.com and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Smock G-Priv 220 watt touch screen. So the majority of this video is going to take place up close, taking a look at the screen, all the functions of it. But first we're going to run through the basics of this mod, go over the specs real quick, then we will dive in, take that close up look, look at the screen, look at the menu system, how to navigate it, how the touch screen actually works in terms of functionality. Then we'll bring it back up top, have a quick vape on it, run over some quick pros and cons, and that'll wrap it up. I do have the TFE8 Big Baby Beast on here. I'm going to cover that in a separate video. That being said though, let's get on to the basics. So starting off with the basics, this is a 220 watt mod. It is a dual 18650 mod. It takes two 18650 batteries. It does have a 2.4 inch touch screen on the front as you guys can see right there. The minimum resistance is 0.1 ohms and it does have temperature control for nickel, titanium, and stainless steel. This mod right here does use that firing bar system like on the HPRIV, the OSUB, the Alien. This one's definitely along that HPRIV style. It's still a firing bar like on all of them but it's definitely more of an HPRIV style bar. We'll see that better in the close up though. Now this mod does come in three different colors. It comes in this red version right here. It comes in a gold version and it also comes in a silver version. Those other two ones do look pretty sweet, but this video is on the red one. And it also comes as a starter kit with the Big Baby Beast or it comes separately just as the mod itself. The GPRIV is also firmware updatable. There is a micro USB port located on the bottom to apply firmware updates. It does not have over the air updates like some of the other smock mods do, but this one does at least have a USB port if they do push out an update, which I'm sure they will be doing. Smock is pretty good about pushing out their updates. But pretty much does wrap up the basics though. Let's go ahead and dive in, take a close up look at this. Take a look at the touch screen, see how it works, some of the functionality, some of the lock features, and all that other good stuff. All right, here we have the packaging on the g -Priv, very standard packaging. Flip it on over, you will see some specs, what it comes with, the g -Priv USB cable, user manual. Open it on up, you will have your g -Priv right here. You get a Smock notification battery card right here. It tells you not to use your batteries if they look anything like that. Great advice and be sure to take note of that. You will get a quality assurance card slash warranty card and you will get the GPRIV user manual. If you have any questions about the GPRIV, this is a great resource to look at. You can also ask though down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. But it does go over all of the basics, batteries, in terms of the screen, locking the device, operating the menu system, some of the notifications that you might receive here. Yeah, and it does go into pretty good depth. You can see there's screenshots there, which is very nice. So you can see what you are doing there on the screenshots, settings, all that. Overall, a very well done menu. You'll get a little silicone case for the G Priv in case you want to put that on there, add an extra layer of protection. It is nice that they included that. And then you'll get a micro USB cable for the firmware updates. All right, now here's the actual G Priv itself. Very sleek looking mod, as you can see here. Carbon fiber back plate for your battery cover. You can pop that off like so. You can see there is four magnets that secure that in place. One, two, three, four. You have a little ribbon here for your 18650 batteries. No rattle whatsoever. You can definitely feel the carbon fiber. It is a nice finish on the back of it. It would have been nice if they added that carbon fiber finish around the exterior too, but hey, it's something. And it gives it a good overall look, that carbon fiber in red right there. On the bottom of the mod, you do have your micro USB port right here and your battery venting holes on the bottom. Up on top, you do have your spring-loaded 510 connection, standard up on top. On this side, you do have your firing bar. This red portion is the firing bar right here. You can see that is when I am firing it. It's obviously saying check atomizer since I took that tank off of there. This little side portion up on top is not a functioning piece. It is just a little design feature. But this right here is sort of like your cell phone's lock button. You just hit that and your screen's gonna go off. So it won't, you won't be able to touch or anything like that. And there is three locking features. So you have your one where it just turns it off. One click will turn it back on. You also have another one where if you hold it, it's gonna lock the screen. So even though the screen is displayed, you can't touch anything on there. And that's the one I've been using because I noticed sometimes when I was vaping, my hand might touch this side of the screen if I didn't have the screen locked and then it would be changing the wattage on me without me knowing. So that is something I do keep on there. And to do get that one, like I said, you just hold it instead of pressing it. So you can see that lock button up there. Otherwise, it's just gonna close your screen like it would on an iPhone or a similar cell phone. When both of those modes are activated, the fire and bar will still work. If you wanna lock the actual firing bar, one, two, three on the firing bar, it's now gonna lock that so you will not be able to fire it. It's gonna say locked when you do try to give it a fire. One, two, three to unlock it. Now it's unlocked. If you wanna turn it all the way off, one, two, three, four, five. You got the touch screen power system off, no. Now you can't see all the notifications on your screen here. You have the current setting, 46.7 watts, standard watch mode, and I've got it on the normal mode. 
you have your amps, voltage, and then the resistance of whatever coil you have up on top. You do have a little puff counter here. You can see it says 26 out of zero. I don't have a max puff counter on here. I just have it set as, as limited. Um, that is an option though, if you do want to put a puff counter, you do have that ability. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see the time, the lock screen, because I have the screen locked right now. And then you have your two battery indicators on the top right. So overall on the screen, there's a lot of information. I think they could have done a better job presenting it, but it does get the job done and it's very standard, straightforward nothing over the top. Now, if you do have your screen unlocked and you just want to change the wattage from right here, you can just hold that down right there. Left, it's going to bring it down. Right is going to bring it up. So that is an option you have. If you just don't want to go into the menu system. You just want to change from the screen. You just get your screen unlocked and you can do that from right there. To get to the main menu, you can see that right here. If you do want to put in the date, you can. Obviously, it's not the year 2000 right now. I have not set up the date on here. But on your menu system, you have your variable wattage mode. Right here in the effects menu, you can see that if you want to do some minimum, soft, normal, or hard. And there is also max as well. And this isn't going to be a con really, but the but it can be a little bit touchy. It does take a little bit of work. I don't think it is a huge con though, but I wish there was just a better system or maybe larger inputs because if you want to scroll down to max, that's not always as responsive as it just was there. And it can be a problem like you guys saw a second ago when I touched that and then it moved the wattage from 40 because it thought I was touching this instead of the actual screen. It's not a huge deal at all, but it is something to take note of. I mean, once you have it set up in your mode, it's not really going to be an issue because you're already there. You're not going to be switching it all the time, but it, it just can be a little annoying. Here on this bar right here, if you want to change your wattage by going to this screen, you have your ability to do that as well. You can change your wattage here, one, all the way to 220 in just about a second. Everywhere in between, you can also do the plus minus if you want to fine tune that. Activate, I already do have it activated because I have it in wattage mode already. Temp control, you can see all these settings here, nickel, titanium, stainless steel. You can see your preheat, you can change the preheat setting on here, anywhere from 10 all the way up to 220. Mess with your resistance and then activate it would make it go into temperature control mode because right now I do have it in wattage mode. So now if you back out, go to the main screen, you're gonna see that I do have it in temperature control now. So very easy to switch between modes. This last setting right here, the puff counter, you can see it's at 26 puffs, reset if you want to. Now you can see that it just reset it back down to zero. If for some reason you wanna put a puff limit on yourself, you do have that option all the way up to 2000 puffs throughout the day. Now in the settings screen, it's more of just information rather than settings. You do have the screen timeout setting and you do have the ability to change the time and date on here, but it is just pretty some more information. It does tell you your current firmware version if you do wanna update it to the latest firmware. Say there's a 2.0 out there and you're not sure if your device had 2.0 on already, you can just check that real quick. You can see it's got 1.5 on there right now. Change how long it takes for the screen to automatically shut off. I usually leave mine actually a lot lower than this, around like 10 seconds or so. Help conserve some battery life. Here's where you can actually set the time in menu. Very easy to do, 2000. Boom, 2016. Not gonna go through all that, but you guys do get the point there. And that is pretty much the whole menu system. To ever get back to the main menu, just hit that fire button. Put it back in wattage mode real quick. Activate on there. Put it in normal. Oh, put it in normal. Main menu. Back to it. 79 watts. Bring it back down to around 40. And you're good to go. That's pretty much everything on the close-up. If I did miss anything or you guys have any questions on this mod, please let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to get back to you. For now, let's bring it back up top. Have a vape on it. And I'll give you my overall thoughts on this guy. All right, now that we've got that close-up wrapped up, let's go ahead and have a quick vape on it. I've got the TFE8 Big Baby Beast on here right now. It does have a 0.15 ohm coil in here right now, and I'm just vaping at 46 watts. Really do like this tank. It's pretty much the same thing as the Baby Beast, just a little bit bigger. But I'll cover all that in that video. In terms of the performance of the actual mod though, which this video is about, it does work great. Fire button works smoothly, not, don't have to push it too hard, and it's pretty much an instantaneous vapor production when you do push that fire button. There's no real delay on there. You push that fire button and then you are vaping. For my overall thoughts on this mod though, I really don't have any cons. I mean, there's a few things I would like to see improved, like maybe a bigger response area for the actual touchscreen portion of it. Like you saw in the close-up when you're in there navigating the menus and you're hitting that plus button. 
I wish that responsive area, like when you push right here, I wish that area was a little bit bigger. Those things are just being very nitpicky though. The overall functionality of the mod is great. It's hands down the best touchscreen mod I've ever used, way better than the Skelly T150 and the Lazimo L3 in my opinion. It is a great touchscreen mod. If that is what you're looking for, this is a great option. It's got the lower profile. It's obviously a little bit wider to make up for that. No problems with the firing bar, no problems with the battery cover. The screen works great, it performs great. Smokka's chips lately have been extremely, extremely good. Some of the best chips out there on the market, besides obviously like the DNA style chips, but they are very, very good chips. Plus the support, they push out firmware updates, they just support their devices very well after purchase. That is pretty much gonna wrap up this video though. If you guys have any questions on the G-Priv or any vape related questions in general, please leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to get back to you. And if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. It is greatly appreciated. And as always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, wonderful weekend, and vape on.